So, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. We also rejoice in our sufferings. We also rejoice in our sufferings. Okay? Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the, by the Holy Spirit. Right? Let me read verse 5 again. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given to us. But you see this? That sufferings here are producing perseverance, character, and hope. Perseverance, character, and hope. Perseverance, character and hope and it's up to us whether we allow those things somebody showed me this morning a picture of their new bible cover and on it is is a potter uh, making a uh, making a you know just a beautiful um, piece of pottery right Amen. the bible says that we're the clay he's the potter yes. right and he's molding us and shaping us somebody say ouch it's not always a pleasant experience, but the byproduct is beautiful. The byproduct can be beautiful. And it really can be beautiful. I've been through so much personally in terms of depression and you know to the point where I could not function, and you know my testimony. But I have more joy today than I've had depression yesterday. Because he got me through it. He got me through it. And listen, if he got me through it, he is sure going to get you through it. Yes. Amen. Right? He's going to get you through it. He's going to get you through it. Okay? What else did she exchange? Well, we see that she exchanged her barrenness, you know, the fact that she couldn't have children. She exchanged her barrenness for God's fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Right? Would you say six kids is pretty prolific, pretty fruitful? Six kids, right? As opposed to zero, not being able to conceive. She exchanged her barrenness for God's fruitfulness. She wasn't content with the fact that she did not have a child. She wasn't content with the fact that she was barren. Sometimes we look at a situation we say, well, I guess that's God's will. Well, that's where you go wrong. You guess that it's God's will. Not necessarily. Why don't you let him determine whether it's his will or not? Press in a little bit. Ask Him. Stand on the promises that are all throughout Scripture. Pray and seek Him for 25 years. Then, maybe, come to the conclusion that it, it may be God's will. Otherwise, we have to press in. Otherwise, we have to determine what His will, purpose, destiny, and plan is for our lives. You know, we, we can't accept a conclusion when God says it's still continuing, Right? We, we, we read the book and we say, well, I guess that's it. And God says, listen, there's a few more chapters left. You know, let me determine when it's over. Okay? Is this, is this maybe useful? Okay, okay good. good. Okay, I'm certainly getting, getting encouraged. Praise God. Fruitfulness is God's will. We see that all throughout Scripture. In John chapter 15, we see that, that Jesus is the vine, we're the branches, and that, that uh, we're, we're to bear fruit. We're, we're supposed to be prolific and prolific and produce something in our lives. It is His will that we are fruitful. John 15, 8 says, This is my Father's will. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So we know that it's, it's His will for us to be fruitful. What kind of fruit are we, are we talking about as Christians? Love, joy, peace, love. So... If I'm being attacked by hatred and bitterness on the inside, His will is that for that to be exchanged and for me to begin to cultivate love instead, joy instead, peace instead. Okay? This is the type of fruit that must be growing in us as Christians. Okay? I know sometimes trees have bad years, but they have to be cultivated, nurtured, watered, fertilized. And then, most likely, fruit will occur. Okay? But uh, they're not supposed to just lay there barren. 
It is God's will that your life produces something valuable for His glory. Whenever, uh, whatever God has in your life, whatever God has purposed for you in your life. Remember Joseph, in every situation, he bloomed where he was planted. Didn't we just talk about this last week, right? Went from the pit, to the prison, to the palace. Wherever he was, he bloomed and he produced fruit, right? He continued to trust God. He continued to seek the Lord. He continued to believe that God was going to fulfill the dream that he had placed on his life, regardless of the situation that he found himself in. And Isaiah 54, 1, let me read that to you. It says, Sing, O barren woman. Sing, O barren woman. You who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy. You who are never, who were never in labor. Okay? Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. So in other words, he doesn't want us to dwell in barrenness in fruitlessness, okay? He wants our lives to produce something, something valuable, something that will bless us and bless others. When you get a whole load of fruit, don't you want to give it away, yes. right? Sure. What, what if somebody gives you just a couple of cases of apples and pears? Isn't that a blessing? Wow, I love fruit. But listen, you better start giving that away. Well, what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen, right? So that's why he blesses our life. For our benefit, yes, but also for the benefit of others that, that he brings across our path. Number three, she exchanged her first fruits for God's abundance. God gave her that son. Isn't that great? And she could have said, well, Lord, you know, I know I made this vow. Something, I mean, Lord, I know I said something to this effect, that if you would give me a son, I was going to give him over to you, but... You know, now that I've got him, I, I just can't. I, I just can't let him go. He's so cute. You know, she was good on her word. She fulfilled her vow. You know, she, she had no idea. I mean, maybe she hoped this, but really, you know, nobody knows the future. She didn't know for sure if God was going to give her more children. I mean, here's something tangible. You know, here's the blessing right here. And she gave it over to the Lord completely. God blesses our life. I learned this a long time ago, that He didn't just have me in mind. He had others in mind. Whatever He blesses me with, the Bible says that I'm supposed to take the first fruits, the top of it, and give it to God. Dedicate it to Him. Give Him the best. The best of the best. Amen. Some of you have probably talked with my wife and you realize that she was raised in Mexico in very poor, poor conditions. And uh, they, they literally lived like, like we see in movies, you know, completely dependent upon the soil and dependent upon the weather. You know, they didn't have irrigation or anything like that. They carried their water for literally miles, right? I mean, even people that are from her state, Mitchell Khan, never heard of where she comes from because it's so out there in the hills, you know. Bless you. <laughs> But um, one thing she told me, she's told me a lot, but one thing she's told me is that when the crop comes, like the corn, they will take the best corn and use that for seed. They would plant the best and therefore reap the best. Okay? Sure, there were little scrawny ones. You know, let's plant this one. Well, you plant scrawny, you'll reap scrawny. You'll reap what you sow. Give your best away. This is, listen, this is not something we do naturally. Naturally we want to give all the junk to the Salvation Army or Goodwill, yeah. right? Uh -huh. God says, give your, your best. And you, when you start doing stuff like this, people think that you're weird and strange. But you're planting and sowing and thus reaping. Give your best away. The first fruit. When God blesses you with something, think of Him first. Right. Whether it's a paycheck or whether it's a, a car. Lord, bless me with a car. God blesses you with a car or a van or a truck. And then you get a call, could you help me move? I know God blessed you with the truck now. Right? <laughs> so that truck was just for you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Give your best to God. And you know what? 
God sees. Remember we read the Lord remembered Hannah. God sees. Nobody else may see. Nobody